Amen. And our subject for tonight is there's two parts to this walk with God. Amen. Yours and His. There's two parts to this walk with God. Yours and His. Amen. And I'm going to say that again. There's two parts to this walk with God. Yours and his. Two parts. Alright? This is not a one way street. There's two parts. Amen. And this is your part, my part, and it's God's part. Amen. Amen. So we're, we're, we're making it an individual thing. So it's your part and it's his part. And when I think about it, it's my part and it's his part. Two parts in this walk with God. All right, the book of Jude, the book of Jude, we're going to begin at verse 20, Jude, verse 20, amen. The Bible says, but ye beloved, building yourselves on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Building yourselves. That's, that's our part. Building yourselves. Praying in, building yourselves on your most holy faith. Building yourselves on your most holy faith. Okay? On that foundation of your faith. That what is it that you're believing in? What is your core belief? What do your beliefs stand on? And it should be the word of God. So then we're going to build ourselves on the word of God. All right? Build ourselves on the word of God. All right. So we're building ourselves on the word of God. And we're going to go to the book of Matthew, the seventh chapter, to talk about that. Because Jesus himself had some words that he declared. The book of Matthew, the seventh chapter. The seventh chapter of the book of Matthew. Matthew, the seventh chapter, verse 24 and 25. says, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine. And we know that the sayings of Jesus is the word of God. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which, here we go, built his house upon a rock. So it is, it is a twofold thing. There is two parts to this. Walk with God. And what we've learned here is that we must build ourselves up on our most holy faith and our 
Now, faith needs to be in the word of God. And Jesus is saying here that he will liken you unto a wise man, the person that builds his house upon a rock. And what the rock is, it is upon the saying of his. His sayings are the rock, which is the word of God. The sayings of the Lord is the word of God. So we have to build ourselves on the material of the word of God. The things that's in the word of God. All right, if you're going to build a house, you don't just, okay, I'm going to build a house and the house is built. No, the house is built out of something. The house is built from something. It is material that the house is built of and from. All right, you got to have some material. Right now, we know that they don't make houses today like they made them years ago. The houses were more sturdy years ago. All right? I like older houses. Mm -hmm. They're more sturdy. These days, they make a whole lot of wood in the house. Look like a bunch of wood standing there when you look at the house. But they had a lot more concrete and metal or steel or whatever back in the day, I would say. Okay? One thing about God's word is his word doesn't change. Yes. It is still made out of the same substance. So if we build ourselves, we have to build it out of the word of God, which is the same substance. It has not changed. The Bible says that God is the same yesterday, today, and he will be forevermore. The same God, the same word. All right, so when the Jesus is talking here, he says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, which is the word of God, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. All right, the rock is the word of God, because we know that Jesus is the rock. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the yeah. word was God. All right, so since the word is God, and Jesus is the word, and Jesus is God, then therefore, that is the rock. Right? So we're going to build on that. We're going to build on the rock, which is the word of God. We're going to build ourselves up on our most holy faith in God's word. But you got to first of all have faith in the word. The Bible says faith is the substance of things, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that is not seen. All right? That faith, but faith in what? Faith in what? In the word of God and in God himself. The Bible says he that cometh to God must, first of all, you have to believe that he exists, that he is. And then that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. All right? I mean, you've got to really go after God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. You've got to go after God uh, more than what people are chasing at the houses and land and all this kind of stuff. You've got to run and chase after God for his righteousness and his holiness. You've got to run after God. All right? So you've got to believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those that put themselves into it. Got to believe that. All right? And that's how we build ourselves up on our most holy faith. That's how we build ourselves up on our most holy faith. Let's go to Psalms 127. Psalms 127. You cannot do it without the word. Remember, he said, there's Two parts to this walk with God, yours and his. God's not going to do it all alone, and you and I can't do it all alone. We, we have to connect with God. This is an us thing. It's you and God. It's me and God. All right? God wants our assistance in 
talking about to be saved. All right, 127. All right, that first verse right there, it says, except the Lord build the house. Well, wait a minute, I thought you said, build myself up on my most holy faith. Well, remember that you have to find out what your faith is in. It's in the word of God. In the word of God is the material to build the house with. So it means I have to use God's materials. And if I say that the word is God and God is the word, that I'm using God to build myself with, I'm not doing it alone. So basically, it really is God that doeth the work in us. But utilizing it, I'll go. So, except the Lord build the house, the laborer, they labor in vain that build it. Because if you don't use God's material, even though you may build a house, the house will not stand. Because you build it with your own material. And our materials, are not eternal materials. Our materials are fleshly and carnal materials. They don't last. But what lasts is God's word when we build ourselves using the word of God. When we declare what God has said over our lives. When he said you are more than conquerors, now we have to say that when we find ourselves in a battle against the adversary. That I am more than a conqueror. Now when I repeat that, I am building myself up on my most holy faith. I am building myself up on the word of God. I am feeding the word to myself. And the more I eat and digest the word, it's just like a natural body. The more you take nourishment in, your body physically will grow and develop and be healthy if you put the right stuff in it. But if you put the wrong stuff in it, then eventually you will be sick. How can we have some diseases and things like that? And, you know, some of us are suffering from that. Now, you know, we, we talk about that um, in my family about some things that we did while we were younger. I did some things when I was younger. When you're young, you know, you don't know. You're just having fun. You can eat just about anything you want to eat, as much as you want to eat it when you're young. Y'all know what I'm talking about? All the sweets that you had and you piled it on and you just kept eating it and eating it and eating it. Let somebody stop you. That's right. But what we did not understand is it was slowly deteriorating different things in our system. It was toxifying our system. And it takes a while for things to build up. Sometimes that's why some people have colon cancer because their, their colon was being impacted and impacted and impacted and impacted over the years. It didn't happen in a day. It didn't happen one year. But as they kept doing things, the colon was being stuffed with stuff and things, all of it wasn't coming out. Because if we don't eat properly, if we don't exercise as we should, the body is meant for movement. We have to move. And as we move, our systems are able to flow better. Things are able to flow through our system better. But when we become stagnant, like when we were children, we ran around, you know, and all that kind of stuff. We don't do that like we did it now, like we did it then. Mm -hmm. Who? Anybody in here today? Mm -hmm. Like you did it when you were younger? I mean, exactly. My back won't let me do it like I was younger. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> so you can't do what you used to do when you were younger. That's right. Okay? So there are some things that sometimes hinder us from doing what we used to do. And sometimes we don't have no hindrances for at least trying, but we just don't do it. Mm -hmm. Like if I was to say, well, how many people in here exercised um, last week at least three times?
time to do it. Mm -hmm. Most people probably would not raise their hand if they told the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so a lot of times we're not really even helping ourselves as we get older. Because we know we're not doing what we used to do as far as exercise is concerned. You know, we're not doing it. But we need to be doing something because the body is not like it used to be. We have got to help it out. All right? We've got to give it what it needs. And it's the same thing in the spiritual. We have to give our spirit what it needs. And what our spirit lives and thrives off of is God. God's word, God's substance, God's nourishment. Now, to be absent from the things of God, then we will find ourselves malnutrition. We won't have enough nutrients in our body, our spiritual body, and our minds will not flow correctly concerning the things of God. We will be stocked up and clogged up. Our spiritual digestive system will not work correctly because we're not putting the right things on the inside. And you eat a bunch of junk, you eat a bunch of junk, he said and she said and they said, and, and that's all you're putting in your, in your body, all right? It becomes toxic. And you get clogged up, all right? And after a while, it starts giving you spiritual disease, and you will find yourself in a, a devastating position. The Bible declares that the wages of sin is death. All right? Now, we talk about spiritual death. There's natural death as well, but we're, we can't talk about the spiritual death. Mm -hmm. So when we keep pumping sin in and pumping sin in and pumping sin in and pumping sin in, it is killing us. It's a poison to our digestive system, spiritual. And again, until we get to a place where they really start showing up. Okay? They start showing up. Let me, let me regress and kind of go back a little bit to our younger days. Okay? What I was talking about. Our younger days, the stuff that we ate and we did, you know, I know I did. I ate a lot of stuff, you know, and our food was good. It was delicious. I, I just love how it tasted. You know, I'm young. All right? You have it fun. It's crazy. It's lovely. That you can eat all this and you can drink all this and throw it out and all that. You know, all in one century. But when you're young, you're not really thinking about the effects that you can have on your body. You're not thinking about it. Not only that, when, even when you get older, I'm going to use um, oodles of music. How many people in here that have eaten oodles of music? You have eaten oodles of music? Okay, they taste good, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> They got this little packet in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They got this little packet in the oodles of noodles mm -hmm. that is packed with flavor. But you know what else is packed with? Yes, Salt. I want you to look on the back of that packet and see how much sodium is in that packet. That little flavorful. Delicious, make it taste real good. I think it's about 2,000 and something grams of salt, maybe like 2,600. I could be wrong, it could be an answer. Just keep on the back. I'm telling you, it's a whole lot. But that's not all. Hell no. A lot of us, we didn't just like the food and the news all by themselves. They like the hot dogs, right? They like the hot dogs. Anybody put hot dogs in there with the news other than me? Anybody ever did that? Oh, yeah. Two hot dogs. Slice, 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 slice. And then you know how much sodium is in one hot dog? Mm. So by the time you get finished eating those fools of news and those hot dogs will taste so delicious. You have put so much salt in your body. And then we had a nerve, some of us, to eat it every day. <laughs> it's so good. The different flavors, you just turn it up. All that salt is accumulating. 
and then as we get older, we start finding ourselves having high blood pressure, swelling up, retaining fluid, not knowing that we were breaking our bodies down for long All that sugar that we ate, all those cakes that we ate, all those pies that we ate. There's nothing wrong with having it sometimes, but we didn't have it. But I mean, we had things, we had, we had bags of candy, we had the candy, we had the cookies, and we had the, the soda, the, the soda also. And we just pulled up all day long. We just ate it. And then after a while, as you get older, you find out that you may have diabetes. Mm -hmm. Because you're pushing all that into your system. Mm -hmm. And then along with the food, you got to eat with your starchy. Mm -hmm. All right. And we, we learned this in school that basically your food will terminate your sugar. Mm -hmm. So if you already have sugar and then you eat food to terminate your sugar, now you have more sugar in your body. And one of the things a lot of people didn't like was vegetables. They want to eat your vegetables. <laughs> hmm. The things that were more healthy. Isn't that funny how we didn't like the things that were more healthy sometimes for us? Just give me something to taste good. What if it's not like it's spiritual? Hmm. The word is more healthy for us. But sometimes we would prefer to have stuff that is negative rather than positive. Negative stuff, I mean, it will go viral real fast. Put something negative online and see how fast it spreads. It's going to spread faster than the positive.
Call it the Las Vegas trip. Okay. When you were selling those drugs, what are you having fun? Yes, I did. Come on now. Did. Couldn't wait to get the next hit. Yeah, Let's be real. Yeah. When you were seeing with every Tom, every Jerry, every Tom, every Tyrone, every Lee Boy, mm -mm. every Samantha, mm -hmm. you were having fun. Yeah. No need to deny the truth. No need to deny the truth. But the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. And that the pleasure, now the Bible says that there is pleasure. My Lord Jesus. There's pleasure in sin. Yes, Lord. Oh, no. You're building it in 
I would have told him pay for it then. You would have told him what? Pay for it. Pay for it? <laughs> you ain't paying back. <laughs> oh no, they can pay for that college if they want to have a fuck wow. <laughs> but you already paid though. That's what I'm talking about. You already paid for it. Mm. And then they went there and they act crazy. Mm. So all your money was down the drain. It was in vain for them. It's the same way sometimes for us. The price has already been paid. Ooh, God. We ought not let that be a mess. We ought to be the conquerors that Jesus died for us to be. To conquer the things of the adversary, not allowing. Now listen to me again. Not allowing. Because when God empowers us, we have the power to say no. We don't have to say no, but we have the power to say no. I get to choose again. I get to choose every single day of my life. I get to make a decision. God don't make me do anything. I would appreciate the gift, but the sentiment to not know what I actually wanted, what color, and the specific and defined point detail that shows the lack of clarity and acknowledgement of my own design. But I knew it though, if I knew it. And that's them choosing not to. Absolutely. So that would be the person choosing not to really show me love. the book um, 
five love languages in about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Talk about that book. Because everybody's love language is not the same. Some people's love language is adoration. We want you to say nice things about them. Nice things to them about themselves. Oh, you know, um, one I love those shoes that you have on. Morning, you're a beautiful person inside and outside. Mm. You're just lucky. Some people, that's what they need. And then there's other people whose love language is gift giving. They like to receive gifts. That's what they consider to be love. Mm. I see you back there. You love it. I did that the same day that I talked about it too. You love to receive gifts. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the person that loves and receives gifts may not really appreciate adoration. Now you could, because sometimes they have more than one love language. You know, some is one is just from a higher level than the other. Um, okay, but let's say you don't really care about adoration. You don't really care. You know, I don't really care about that. Just give me the gift. You know, they might think like that. And so now I'm, I'm giving you adoration all the time. It has no effect on you. You're not appreciating that because that's not your language. That's something you have to learn, people. Mm -hmm. If we're going to love someone, we have to love them in their language, not ours. But what we tend to do is do it backwards. We tend to do for people what we want done for us. Mm -hmm. And we call that love. Mm -hmm. your, my love language could be gift-giving, so I'm going to give you a bunch of gifts. Mm -hmm. But it's not your love life before I'm not really giving you love. You're not feeling the love. Let me put it that way. To me, I feel like I'm giving you love. Mm -hmm. And then when you start acting a certain way, I'm like, well, what in the world is wrong? Because, you know, I'm showing you that I love you. But you're not showing me the way I want to be loved. Mm -hmm. You're doing to me what you want. That's what I say. You're giving me what you want. Jesus. If I like orange juice, and I don't like apple juice. I don't want apple juice. Don't give me apple juice. Because you like orange juice. That's not giving me love. So God tells us how to love him. Now this is the problem that we have sometimes in humanity. Is the fact that we just automatically expect sometimes that people they ought to know. Who is a monster? Sometimes they know some things. But everybody don't know everything about you. And we got to open up our mouth and communicate <laughs> to people what we want. And that's a lack of communication sometimes. We fall out with people and everything because we have a lack of communication. They just should have knew. They just should have knew. Well, they should have read your mind. Come on, Lord, talk in here. Communicate. <laughs> if this is a relationship, we must communicate. I cannot expect you to know everything that I want and that I desire. I can't expect that. But once you tell me, now I'm going to dial next year. Once you tell me what you would like for me to do to show you love, and I don't give it to you, then I'm showing you I don't love you. I mean, I'm not telling you anything. I really don't love you. You can say it a billion times. I don't love you. Is this the way I would like to be treated? This is the way I would like to be handled. I don't like nobody to howl and scream at me. So, you know, we can talk, but I don't want nobody to howl and scream at me. And God knows I'm going to raise your hand. Because mm -hmm. that's going to go to a whole other you know what I'm saying? So if they hollering and screaming after you, after you have a conversation, mm -hmm. that's not love. Mm -hmm. If they raising their hand, that's not love. Period. That is not love. Okay? I know there's some people out here that they feel love when they get knocked upside the head, but that's just a lie. That is no love in that. That is a toxic person. And first of all, more than likely they don't love themselves, and that's why they beat you up. And that's the truth. But when we express and we communicate what love is to us, and the person that we love, and the person that say that they love us, Refuse to give to us what our love language is. It tells us you do not love me. 
Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you all my love. I'm going to tell you what love is to me. Now, I've already told you that if you delight yourself in me, I will give you the desires of your heart. As long as it's not a simple thing. I will give you whatever you ask me. And if I say no, I have a reason why I say no. A delay will save your life. Come on. Absolutely. Sometimes some things are on hold. Not for right now. Mm -hmm. And then there's some things that's just not meant to be for you at all. Mm -hmm. And God knows that. Mm -hmm. He knows that. But this is, I just, You don't do that, and you're capable of doing that. And I see that you love the children's shoes and ran over, and they just, you know, I found you just love. It's not love. God wants to feel what we feel. We want to feel love. this emotion, unemotional man. Mm. He is an emotional being. He said, let us make man in our own image, yes. mankind. Yes, in our own image. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. So God does have feelings. Mm. Now, he's not going to die if we don't love him. But it is possible. The people that he created, that we don't want to love. Them. It's like if you had children, and you know you did the children right, and they don't even want to acknowledge you. You know what I'm saying? You take your children. You take your children to the point where you walk to your children's pool and you 
dump everybody else through the next thing. And maybe like trying to get out your hand, you trying to hold that hand, you know, mm-hmm. they go stand over here somewhere. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't want nobody to know that I'm with you. But is that not how the child is? You go. We want blessings with you in front of certain people. Because we want them to view us in a certain light. And we don't want to spill the seed that we connect them with God. Because they might just say something about Take me over. But when you truly love someone, you love them. And it doesn't really matter what other people do. When you really love them. It could be somebody that has so many scars that's visible. And people can see it. And they will be like, why in the world would they be with them? But when you are willing to ask, some people even try to hide it from God. And we can't hide anything from God, but we try. But when you can get bare and naked before God, because He don't make you do that. He don't make you do that. But when you are willing to do that, and get bare and naked before God, and just let the Lord know what God does feel powerful. Some things would have already driven me crazy. I know this. 
get down with my children and going through so much pain in this
Step back over to the book of James. Okay. Right before Revelation. All right, but ye, beloved, that's 23, but ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So praying in the Spirit of God. We got to pray in the Spirit of God. You can't pray in the Spirit of God if you don't have the Spirit of God. If you don't have the Spirit of God, you got to get the Spirit of God to pray in the Spirit of God. But also praying in the Spirit of God because God is His Word. The Word of God is, is God. All right? So in the Word also. But listen. Praying in the Spirit. 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, verse 11 to 14. of man, save the spirit of man, which is in him. Even so, the things of God know no man, but the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, mm -hmm. but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. With things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. So you gotta get it so that it is able to teach you what God has to say. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. That's what the Holy Ghost does. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So if we're going to deal with the natural man, which is the carnal man, then we can't receive the things of God. We actually will reject those things. Even after we get the spirit. If we decide that we want to walk in the carnality, which is in our flesh, then you leave out the spirit and you get into your flesh. But when you walk in the spirit, the Bible says walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Mm -hmm. All right? So when we're dealing with the spirit of God, mm -hmm. that is what's going to help us discern rightfully. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to help us to know the will of God. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I'm going to leave the comforter mm -hmm. with you, which is the Holy Spirit. And he shall bring all things back to your remembrance whatsoever I have told you, yeah. which was the word of God. So the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit, when he enters in, he doesn't enter in for us to continue in ourselves. He enters in so that now we can start building the spiritual part of us. The inner part of us. But we have to build it according to God's word. Amen. Not the stuff that I like. That's right. Yeah. Oh, oh, let me talk about that. 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 Don't ask me where some people's minds won't go once I say this. <laughs> But you know it's true. Dig deep down inside yourself. You don't have to go that far. You don't have to dig deep. <laughs> it's some things in this Bible I just love. <laughs> oh, stuff to make me feel good. I love it. Mm -hmm. okay. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Make me feel good, and I, I love it. I've really got that part when the Lord said, No weapon that's formed against me shall be able to prosper. Yeah, good shout on that. I, I, I feel good 
that God will supply all our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Do you love that? Oh, yes. But there are some hearts in there that I've heard. <laughs> Ooh, that I've gotten to in some places in my life, and the word came to me, and I was like, Ooh. Sometimes it can be like your enemy. Mm -hmm. feel it. Can you feel it? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Do good to them that hate you <laughs> and persecute you and say, oh man, I'm evil against you for oh, You don't quite be loving that all the time. Like, oh. It was good that you got to this part, right? <laughs> but the thing of it is, she says, if you gotta eat the whole world, you don't get to pick and choose. Oh, wait a minute, hold up. Now, when he said the part that I like, that was right, I know that's gone. <laughs> but as soon as he got to something that I don't like, I know, did God didn't say that. <laughs> man wrote that. Well, then man wrote the part that I like. Right. Am I right? Right. That's the word. The Bible says, that the word is inspired by God. Man did right, but they were inspired by God. Yes. To write. Now, I know how is it that I can, because I'm a, either I'm God, or I know everything that God knows mm -hmm. and that God says. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go in there. I like that piece. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Again, praying in the spirit of God. Praying in his spirit. Praying in his word. Praying with the spirit um, speaking through us. You know, when you get in the anointing, when God comes down and you feel the presence of the Lord. And I was, I want to backtrack again, because I was talking about that, how some people don't even really believe they can have a relationship with God, because of course he is high and he is holy. But, for God likes to be served out of me, out of me. It's sad that some of us really don't know how much he loves us. He has literally been over backwards for us. He does everything possible to ensure our salvation. But what he doesn't do is make us make us Come on. He doesn't make us make us And again, I say that's free. Love, true love is free. I'm not making you love me. I'm not going to make you do what I have said for you to do. I'm not going to make you do it, but I'm going to tell you that if you go this way, mm-hmm. then this is what's going to happen. And I'm, I'm, I'm recommending that you go the right way because I'm going to see the best things for you. Mm-hmm. But I'm not going to make you do anything. But I'm going to set it up for you. Mm-hmm. That was the purpose of giving this to you. Mm-hmm. So that we would have the chance, we would have the opportunity and he gives us the right to be gentle. That's divine love. Yes. Because he was with me. <laughs> and you yeah, and mercy. That you can go reject after my son the bled and died on the cross. Mm-hmm. I was picking tree. Because I'm a human being. And you can pick tree. So good.
your heart and you try to cover it up from God, you better go tell God, I can't stand that person. I know I'm not supposed to be like that, Lord, but I can't stand that person. He would rather hear you tell him the truth. But I need you to help me because you told me to love. Yes. And now when you sit down with God and you be truthful with him, and you allow the spirit of God that's inside to direct you and open these pages, God talks to you. Well, he brings word back to you. You have the spirit of God for a reason. He talks. You're not crazy. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. You're not crazy. He would be. <laughs> he probably if he didn't have it. I know I'll be. Honesty is key. Honesty is key. Just let the bag all. Honesty is key. Bag all, you had to call it, come on, honey. That's just the truth. That's how you see you had to call. If you can't stand up, they can tell you a drug addict. If you, if you was downtown, were you downtown? Michelle, weren't you down there? No, no. So how are you going to tell them that you was not a drug addict? They can tell them. But your mama was still calling. The saints were still praying. Don't tell me what God wants. Don't tell me what God can't do. <laughs> and you are just on it for a couple of years. About 25, 25 years of being <laughs> But God. Oh, that's power. That's power in the king. There's power in that Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord Jesus. Power, 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 power. Power. St. John, the sixth chapter, verse 63. Now, y'all know when y'all get tired of turning the pages, you don't have to turn because I'm going to turn. I love it when I see what God can do. I just love it when He do things in my life. I love it when He do things in other people's lives. I love seeing His work. I got sick of having me to you. You know how to do that? You know how to do that. St. John 6, 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth, which means make alive. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are what? Spirit. Spirit. And they are life. That's what Jesus said. He said, when I speak, his word is spirit and it's life. That's what you got to build yourself off of. The spirit things of God and the life of the word. The word gives life, honey. Yes, Lord. Yes. You don't have to walk around dead and trespasses and sin. When we build ourselves off of this word and we use this material, come on, we will get life. I'm talking about real life. Real life. Sometimes we think we living, but we did. Come on, in here. Come on, in here. Come on, in here. Come on, in here. Come on, Or when we get in this word and we taste this word and we use it to build ourselves. Yes, yes. The life that we will experience. Yes. It's beyond your wildest dreams. It's beyond what people could really fathom. And it doesn't mean that everything is going to be going lovely and wonderful at all times in your life. But this word will give you so much peace. It will pass understanding. You won't even understand how you can have so much peace in certain situations. You have peace. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Jesus said he came Come on. to bind up the broken heart. He came to heal wounds. He said he came to do that. So when you're going through 
praying the Spirit, I'm praying the Spirit, we're praying the Word. Praying the Word. This is what you say. You say that you came to me. Now you and God is in communication. Some of you are really communicating with God mm-hmm. in prayer. Communicating with God. And you're in prayer. And you're in the Spirit of God. Mm-hmm. And God begins to prompt you. The Holy Ghost begins mm-hmm. to prompt you. Sometimes He may just prompt you and put a spirit, a spirit not put a spirit, but put a song in your spirit. Yes. Mm-hmm. Anybody ever had? Yes, yeah, yeah, Mm, yes, Lord. They put a song in his spirit. Yes, Lord. And you just begin to sing that song while you're in his presence. Mm-hmm. Just sing the song while you're in his presence. Oh, yeah. And as you begin to sing the song, you will feel the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ. I literally felt God reach in where the hurt was. My God. My Lord. Reach in. I and and I, this is what I say to you. When you are experiencing hurt, mm. I want you to start thinking about when you feel hurt. Amen. Because all hurts are not in the same place Come on. that you feel. Amen. Think about your physical body mm-hmm. when you start hurting, when you're wounded. Mm. Now, sometimes you might have a hurt when you have God. God mercy. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you feel it up here. You mm. might feel hurt. Some people feel it here, mm. in their memory, in their mind. Mm. But I want you to mm-hmm. think about it the next time you get hurt, because you will live in your mind. Mm-hmm. You keep on living. Some things are coming. Okay? But I want you to think about where am I feeling the pain? Mm-hmm. I have felt God reach in mm-hmm. the area where the pain was. When you say he's healing, he's healing. He's not just a healer, but a healer. He can heal. Yes, he can. He's able. Now, does God do the same exact thing for everything? Perfect. He doesn't do the same exact thing for every person, but he does things for every person in the world. He wants us to be made whole. Amen. Now that he does want. He wants us to be made whole. Everybody in here. God wants us to be made whole. Oh my God. He wants us to be made whole. And we have to allow him to make us whole. And sometimes it's a process. You gotta take this word sometimes and you gotta use it to build yourself up. Say to yourself what God said about you. Mm-hmm. This is what God said. Mm-hmm. This is what God said. I believe it. Mm-hmm. I speak it over my life. Mm-hmm. I speak it over my life. Mm-hmm. I speak it over my life. And that's the devil. You are lying, devil. You, mean, you are not going to have your way over my life. I got control because God gave me control over you. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to let the devil just tear us down. Or use our past one. Because people even love to bring up our past. Yeah. But sometimes we just double double that's in the past and you may need it. Right. And that's what I'm gonna leave it. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Amen. I won't be poor. Yeah. First Corinthians one. Did I did I did I deal with um John six twenty six three? Yeah. Yes. First Corinthians. Now he's talking about Tom, uh, really he really giving us a gift of tongues, not the initial um, tongues that you, or that we, you know, receive the Holy Spirit. 
But anyway, never mind. Wherefore, that him that speaketh in an unknown tongue, pray that he may interpret. So you're inside the church, speaking in an unknown tongue. When you speak in an unknown tongue, it's okay to do it like just pray through it. You know, it's out loud. But it depends on how you do it at that point. Because there's a certain way that it's done when it's supposed to be a prophecy. Okay. And if you're not prophesying, you should be doing it in that way at a certain point. Okay? You should do that. All right. But he says, pray that you may interpret what you say. So that's even when you're at home if you speak in the tongue. Mm -hmm. If you want to understand what you're saying, mm -hmm. then pray that God will give you understanding mm -hmm. of what you're saying. Because sometimes there are unknown tongues and sometimes are known tongues. Mm -hmm. The known tongues are the languages that we have down here. Mm -hmm. Unknown tongues are heavenly languages which the Bible speaks of. Mm -hmm. And so we don't know what they're saying unless God mm -hmm. talks us to it. Regardless of the interpretation. Okay. And this is to be he's saying here. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. Mm -hmm. I will sing with the spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Sometimes God gives us song. Or sometimes it's a song that, you know, is out here. And sometimes in tongues, God may give you the song in tongues. Mm -hmm. He will give you a language in tongues. It kind of reminds me of um, my grandmother was the one in our family who was black. So she actually spoke a mixture of Spanish and Yoruba. Mm -hmm. So it was that Creole language that she allowed to speak with us. Literally, my best memories, may she rest in peace, are just singing with her in that. Absolutely. And that's what I love, what you just said. So you see how your grandmother shared her language with you? That's what God does with you. He will share the heavenly language with us. Mm -hmm. And it's just beautiful. It's really nice. What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. But it's being done with the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. It's so much about God that He wants to share with us. When Jesus was here, He told His disciples, He said, There's many things that I would like to share with you, but basically, y'all not ready for it. My God. Mm -hmm. See? And sometimes we're just not ready for what God really wants to share with us. And it's just so true. But God is so beautiful. He's so beautiful. Yes, he is. When you get to know him, Amen. sometimes we, we just don't take the time to get to know him like we want to know him. Now, we're not going to know every single thing about God because God is gone and we know every single thing about God and we to come about Christ. Right. Uh, we're not going to. But he wants, to, he wants us to have more experience with him. He wants us to be able to, to really walk with him. Yes. And feel his presence like perhaps you've never felt his presence. Mm -hmm. To be able to walk in the house and feel his presence. Mm -hmm. And know his name. To be washed in the dishes yes. and feel his presence right there. Driving in the car, and he just show up and you. let you know that he loves you. Like I'm here, right here with you. Yes, I'm a mama. You just start feeling his presence with you. Oh, you got to be a star. Yes, oh Lord, my God, it's beautiful. Oh yeah. Amen. So I'm gonna stop right here. All right. There's two parts to this walk with God: yours and. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We thank the Lord for those of you that are watching.
that, and that if you really think about it, it's two parts to this poem. It's two parts because it's a relationship. Yeah. Relationship with us, with God. You and God. And so that means you have your part, and he has his part. Exactly. I have my part, and he has his part. But he is faithful to do his part. Yeah. We have to make sure that we're faithful to do our part. Yes. All right? And that's how the relationship stays together. Exactly. And it sticks like glue. Yes. It's a bond between yeah. you and God, if you want it to be like that. Yes. Amen. At this time, we're going to receive the offering. If you would like to give, you can come and give the five. We have given five. All right? South Rock at the South State Church. You'll see my picture there. And you can go to the Bible class and give your offering there. If you have cash app and you'd like to give, you can go to Dollar Sign South Rock AFC. Dollar Sign South Rock AFC. In the notes for Bible study. Amen. And by way of announcement, and for those of you that's in house, if you would like to give, I know most of us give electronically, if you'd like to give, Evangelist Brown is right there, and you can drop it in the offering place. All right, by way of announcement, on tomorrow at 6 a.m., 6 a.m. in the morning, PCAFI, the Pentecostal Church of the Apostolic Faith International, prayer call. All right, prayer call. A lot of times our bishop will be on our presider um, in that prayer. And at the end of the prayer, he will be little nuggets of the word of God. He wants to get those nuggets in and hear it in the sense of God on there and praying, amen, from all over the place. Okay? Um, even, um, even other um, countries, all right, get online prayer together. So at 12 o'clock tomorrow noon, um, our church, South Rock at the South Faith Church, we have a prayer call at 12 noon. All right? And all this information is found on our Facebook page. At 7 o'clock, there's prayer here tomorrow in person and on Zoom. Here tomorrow in person and on Zoom. Sunday at 9.30 is Christian Education. At 11 o'clock is our morning service. At 5 o'clock, we have evening service, all right? And that's on Sunday. Amen. So let's, let's um, govern ourselves according to these announcements. Also, um, the last week of May, starting what, what date does it start? The 30th. May the 30th starts our council, all right? Now, council is in Washington, D.C., all right? And so... Starting on Wednesday? Thursday. Starting on Thursday, Thursday through Saturday. Thursday through Saturday. All right? So they will be having, and all you have to do is go online. If you go to EFSC, um, go to EFSC.org, EFSC.org. All right? And the program is there for you to look at. All right? So the services that you want to go to are the way to go to. This year is the year that they are also um, doing the vote, all right, for position. They're going to vote for position. Um, Friday is the current body, so the positions are going to, going to be um, voted on, I believe, for uh, maybe for our maybe for our chairman, assistant vice chairman. Um, I'm talking about Friday, kind of body stuff. And whoever else is in those positions, that person, things like that. Um, Saturday is the youth. Saturday is the youth department, so um, they're probably going to vacate all of those offices and then, you know, they can um, recommend somebody. All right, and the vote will go out and they'll go to the um, But you can't vote if you're not there. They say you have to be there first. Now, Friday's vote, which is it's the, Friday is the major vote, because um, that's who rolls out in the council. That's one of the major vote. But they have it in the daytime. They have it in the daytime. A lot of people are at work in the daytime. But you got to be there vote if you're going to vote. All right? Um, Please, 
make sure that we do attend the McCallison. The McCallison. All right. We may not be able to make it in the day. We'll make it in the day. We try to make it in the evening. The McCallison. All right. This is just some good stuff there for the seminars and things like that. You don't want to miss out. All right, and they're also going to be doing, I think, the Sunday school as well um, for the council on you know, Saturday. Um, all right, we want to start. Go to council. All right, Washington, D.C., um, Bishop Leslie's Church. So, Bishop Leslie's Church. So, you can go online and get all the information. Let's basically, if you haven't paid your um, your dues,